One of the great things about the show is I get to meet people from all over the country, in fact, all over the world, get to go and travel where they live and hunt the way they do. Well, this week we're heading down to Texas to hunt hogs with one up hog dogs and a good friend of mine, Michael Loya. I met Michael a few years ago down in Texas on a hog hunt. I was hunting with the guys from Heli Hog Hunt, and we were doing a helicopter hunt to eradicate the hogs on the Liberty Bell Ranch. One of the things about helicopters is that once you run a ranch for a few days, the hogs become really smart, become nocturnal, they hide up in those swamps and they won't come out. And that's where Michael and his dogs came in. We get to run the hogs all night through the swamps, push them out of where they were holding up, and help to eliminate part of the problem that the hogs were causing on that ranch. I started with hog dogs when I was about eight years old with an old veteran that uh, took me under his wing. He was kind of a trouble kid back in the day, so he took me under his wing, kept me hunting, kept me out of trouble. We, we hunted day, night, didn't matter. And from there, I got my own pack of dogs. He passed away about when I was 16, and I took every dog he had and kept on going, and I, I still like to take young kids hunting today. I think it's important that we carry on with the tradition and generations coming up. You ready? Cody? Hey, give me a sec. Give me some up. All right. You're going to want to leave. For our second night out, the guys did a little scouting, got a good feel for the property, saw where there might be some hogs laying up. They had seen a big boar earlier in the day, got the dogs out, and I'd say within an hour, these dogs were on the trail. So we're standing out by the edge of this swamp, waiting for the dogs to get this, this hog bait. Once they did, you start hearing it, they let those catch dogs go. I mean, that's when all the chaos starts, man. We're running through the swamp, trying to catch up to these dogs. You know, I had some mixed feelings about uh, uh, stabbing a hog with a knife. You know, it wasn't something where I needed to prove that I'm a badass or something like that. I, it, it didn't make that much of a difference to me how I killed a hog. But uh, when I got there and seen that the only safe method to do this was with a knife. Look, it's for the dog's safety. Uh, I, there was no weapon I could have fired right then that I could have be, be totally assured that I wouldn't have hurt one of those dogs. Taking a hog down with the knife was definitely the safest and most humane way to do it. It's funny how you meet people and you kind of hit it off and form a friendship. Well, Michael and I have stayed in touch since I hunted with him a few years ago. And this year he invited me to come down to his house and hunt with him on some of the ranches where he eradicates hogs. One of the cool things about staying at Mike's house is that I got to see his operation behind the scenes. He has his kennels at his house. I watch him work with his dogs. I see the love that he has for the dogs and the amount of effort he puts into his training. And the amazing thing is to see how these dogs respond to going hunting. I mean, you can't contain them. The dogs that didn't go with us every day were just jumping through those cages to get out. Now, these dogs were bred to hunt. And most people who don't hunt with dogs don't really understand it. Uh, this is a little dangerous, hunting hogs. Yeah, it is. You know, and he, it can put the dogs in danger. Michael protects them. He has special collars and special vests that he wears to protect the dogs. But, you know, there is an element of danger for the dogs. But when you watch these dogs and you see the ones that he doesn't take the day we go hunting and you watch how they're freaking out in these cages, jumping up and down, really wanting to go, they can't wait to get after these hogs. We're hunting in South Texas. The breed of dogs we're using today has adapted from hounds to catahoulas to blackmouth curs. I personally now run uh, Argentine Dogos from CDN kennels out of Canada. Uh, bred by Wayne Dibley and they've come down here to Texas and they've adapted to the territory very well. These dogs today that we breed, they live to hunt, they live to do what we want them to do. They would do it rather we want them to do it or not. They thrive on doing their job. They want to please you, they want to catch hogs. We're not just killing hogs for the fun of it, we're helping farmers, ranchers, in any way possible to keep these hogs under control. Uh, last year we killed 360 plus hogs with just dogs. 
Obviously that's a lot more meat than one family can consume. Every piece of meat is donated to somebody that wants it, eats it, enjoys it. Not only are we helping ranchers and farmers, we're helping families that may want the meat or need the meat. When we arrived, Michael told us the hogs really weren't coming to the feed during the daylight hours. So we decided to formulate a plan. We used a Tink's dominant boar and a sow and estrus scent bombs and put some scent drags out just to see if we can get these hogs moving during daylight hours. So putting these scent bombs out weren't that we were gonna track the hogs and get the shot at the scent bomb, but to at least get these hogs moving, pushing their scent all throughout this ranch, making it easier for the dogs to track them. Well, the best time to hunt these hogs is in the morning. They're still dew on the plants and it really holds the scent. So the first morning we were out there, we released the dogs right around those scent bombs and where we had put those scent drags and they were on the hogs. So I asked Mike on this hunt if it would be possible for me to try it with a bow. Not release the catch dogs, just the bay dogs. See if they could get the hog bait up and I could get a shot. One of the main things is not injuring the dogs. I can't stress that enough. Now, I shoot an 84 pound bow. My arrow is pretty much gonna go through that hog into the ground. So you have to be careful of any dog that's behind the hog so the arrow doesn't go through the hog into the dog. So the safety of the dogs was the most important thing and that's what we were most concerned with. So we get in on this hog, the dogs got him cornered, I'm in on him, but you know there was no way I was gonna take a chance of injuring one of these dogs. You know, if I didn't get a clean shot, I wasn't gonna take it. So a few times on this, I did draw my bow back. I thought I had a clean shot, but then when you're looking through, thinking about the brush, a dog would run in behind him and it, I just didn't feel comfortable taking the shot. Look, I know I would've hit the hog, but I was also concerned about the dogs. Then we got this hog cornered in the brush, and you know, we get the bright idea that I'm gonna run down this hedgerow, get out ahead of this hog, and head him off. Wasn't one of my brighter moves. I get out there, here comes this hog, we know he's coming, we can hear the dogs coming, so we know this hog is coming out of the bush. Way, Next thing I know, the hog's coming right at me. There wasn't much I could do. I had a bow in my hand. You know, I, I thought about it for a second, but you know, it was just an instant. And your first reaction is to get out of his way. I tried to get out of the hog's way, but he wasn't having any of it. Hog ran over and just threw me into the brush. And the only thing I can say is I was thankful that that hog didn't have big cutters because I'd have been in trouble. Man, that was intense. You know, you just, the big thing is not hurting the dog. You want to make sure this arrow is going clean through that pig into the ground because a partial penetration, that broadhead sticks out, the dogs are going to jump on them once they smell blood. It's going to endanger the dog. We're going to try with the with the bow and uh, so we'll see if we can get on them again. Dogs are hot. We've been chasing this hog for a while and they dropped off it. So. They got the catch dogs loose, and I don't know if they got this hog, but it's in here. We're gonna keep looking, it came at us once. So I don't know if it's smart to go crawling in there, but if I could skirt along the edge, maybe I get a shot. Can't see the dog behind it. Uh, you're good, they're all out of the way. Yeah, I know, but that head, I got a head on the shot. Oh. <laughs> I got this arrow through. Looks like they're pulling the dogs off. We lost this hog. I mean, it was a chance at a shot, but you know, they warned me before I was going to take the shot with the bow. Do not take a shot if there's a chance of hitting the dogs, and you just you got to be careful. So we'll see if we get another one. So this hog runs me over. We regroup, we start going after him again. This hog gives us the slip. We don't get this hog. 
So Michael and I were talking. It started getting hot. It's down in South Texas. So one of the best things we thought to do was the next hog we get on, release the catch dogs. You know, the hog population has just exploded everywhere in the U.S. And, and just about every state knows about this and knows about the problems that these hogs cause. We've been 30 years ranching, cow-calf operation. Uh, this is my livelihood, been doing this all my life. The ranch is about roughly around 2,000 acres. All the hogs, they, when I plant oats, they go ahead and root it up and just destroy it, destroy the crops and stuff like that. And they, they root up the coastal fields that's having problems with cutting the hay and stuff like that. It's, they give a lot of problems with that. Oh, we probably take off at least about 100, 150 hogs a year and it doesn't put a dent in it. So finally we get on another hog, dogs get him out, pull him out, we put the hog down, and that's how our first morning ended, was just after getting run over by that hog, you realize that how dangerous this can be. It makes you think about when you're rushing in after these hogs, but the excitement level was through the roof. Hey, it's just no way you're using a bow on something. It's just thick and in there, and it's the safest thing. And look, the reason we're doing this is to remove these hogs from this ranch, so. You know, dogs doing their work. Yeah, we got to do a few hours and uh, try to do it with the bow the first time. We'll keep trying. If we get the opportunity, we'll take one with the bow. But the knife is the most humane way to do it. So the next morning we were gonna hunt hogs on another ranch and you know again you get up and that excitement level is so high you know the, the energy that the dogs project just rubs off on everybody everybody's excited to go mike's getting the dogs collared up we're loading them up in the truck we're heading out to another ranch in texas now you get down there and you got to understand that like hunting with dogs the coolest thing for me is that i'm getting to do what the local guys do this is how most of them eradicate hogs either they're using dogs they're setting up on feeders they're driving their trucks if they see hogs they're taking them out look this is a major problem down there so they really need to take some of these hogs out of all these ranches Let the dogs loose and uh, on the ranch this morning. A little breezy, a bit, bit, bit dry. It's not good for tracking, but uh, hopefully these dogs can get on a good hog this morning. We're driving the roads. The dogs all have GPS collars. They're kind of tracking the dogs, see what they're doing. Once they see a formation, they know the dogs are on a hog. They're going after it. Once we see them forming up, we're staying on the roads, trying to follow them, get as close as we can so that we can get there quickly. Once the dogs get on a hog, the danger level goes up so much higher because once they corner this hog, if we don't get there quickly, what's gonna wind up happening is it puts all those dogs in danger. And the big thing for me was just getting through the terrain and following these dogs. And all I could tell you is if you've never run into cactus before, you don't know what I'm talking about. I was pulling needles out for the next three months. <laughs> and the thing is that when you, you hear the dogs going, and they release those catch dogs. Now, once they hold that hog down, the, the key is to get there as quick as possible because the dogs can be injured. Hey, good oh. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh. Hold on. So we, we get through all the brush and we get to this hog. The dogs got him on the ground, take out the knife, put the hog down, and we all step back and looked at the size of the cutters. Even the local guys were pretty blown away by what we saw. Teeth on that hog. Oh, cow. <laughs> that, ain't no, that ain't no joke, man. 
That ain't no joke. Yeah. That was a big hog. Well, that was pretty cool. The dog got on that hog quick, and that's the whole thing about getting in the morning is the still a little dew on the branches, even though it's dry here. Dogs can pick up the scent and got in on this hog, and he's just a giant, big teeth on him. Now we got the fun part, trying to get him out of here. Because as you can see, this is some of the thickest country I've ever hunted in. And with this cactus, I got enough of it stuck in me to uh, teach me to avoid it on the way out. Because uh, you're, you're running in trying to get to the dogs and you're trying to get here as quick as possible. Just to uh, protect the dog so that hog with those teeth doesn't get loose. But I tell you, you watch those catch dogs work and it is amazing. You know, they're just, they're the, they're the most calm dogs when you're hanging out with them by yourself. But when they get on a hog, they're ruthless, man. They really, they really bear down. So, like I said, we're going to try to get this hog out of here and... See, we'll see how that goes. That was one big hog. It was a good hunt, and the dogs did their job. That's what's important. The dog got hurt, we got the hog down.